So when we talk about sharing of electrons in covalent bonding, uh, we usually talk, think that the sharing happens relatively equal, but the reality is that most of the sharing is not very equal, okay? So that same thing happens um, between like siblings having to share toys, it happens with molecules. So one of, those two mo uh, one of those two atoms in that bond wants to share the electrons or wants the electrons more, or for some reason gets them more, okay? Um, so when that happens, we end up having a two-sided kind of bond. Okay, when we have two sides to that, we call that being polar or having polarity. Okay, so polarity is going to be the way that we measure this: how equal or unequal the sharing is between a covalent bond. We're not talking ionic here; we're talking more covalent. Okay, now take a look at the slide. First thing we want to talk about is bond polarity. Okay, or basically how polar a bond is. Okay. Um, if you are a polar bond, that means you have a partial, and this is your lowercase delta to kind of symbolize that, a partial positive or a partial negative side to it. Notice how it's not a complete partial, negative or complete positive, because these are not ions here, okay? And it comes from our differences in electronegativity. So on the back side of your periodic tables, we had that chart for electronegativity, so we actually can calculate this difference and then determine the polarity based off that calculation, okay? So... Example one here, we have a nonpolar covalent bond, meaning it's not two-sided. Okay, so here electrons are shared equally. So if something like chlorine bonded with chlorine, we end up getting an equal density of electrons. Okay, um, meaning that they share this stuff equally. Now, as you move to the from left to right, and you start getting more and more difference in electronegativity, uh, at some point there's enough difference there that we say, hey, you know what, this really isn't even sharing anymore. From here over, we're really is uneven now, okay? Um, so this isn't like a black or white thing. This is actually a continuum that we purposely break at this point. So what we say is anything that is greater than or equal to 0.4, we're going to call polar. There's a difference, enough difference in electronegativity to generate a difference in where the charges are, okay? So we do get this partial positive, partial negative, okay? That gives us a polar covalent bond. Now, in this case, we have unshared electron. Uh, unequally shared electrons. If you keep moving, at some point, the polarity gets so high that you actually are not even sharing anymore, and you actually b b dive into that ionic world, okay, where the electrons are really more transferred than they are shared, okay? So let me kind of give you a way to kind of look at this. So if we had two chlorines bonded to each other, and then we started talking about the electron density here between these two chlorines, the electrons would basically hang out between these two chlorines pretty equally throughout time, okay? So we see this electron density in here, and it wouldn't really be on one side or the other. So this would be nonpolar here. However, when we take something like hydrogen bonded to chlorine, and we look at that electron density, what we see is that the chlorine kind of holds on to this for the most of the time. Hydrogen kind of gets it a little bit, but most of the electron density we see is actually over here. So as a result, we end up having this kind of this kind of partially negative side to it and this partially positive side to it. Another way we can represent that, we actually can draw a plus and draw a line over that way. Okay? So here we actually have a polar bond. Okay? Now if you get to a place where sodium bonds with chlorine in this kind of bond, now we're dealing with the fact that sodium is actually positively charged and chlorine is negatively charged. So the electron density stays just with chlorine the entire time. Doesn't mean there isn't any probability that that could happen, but for the most part, it is all on chlorine. Okay. So in this case, we no longer even have um, our uh, polar here. Now we're back to being ionic. Okay. In terms of our bonding, so that kind of that's how it kind of works. All right. Now what we can do is we actually can calculate this difference. So if we actually look up uh, the difference between our um, electronegativities, we actually can do that calculation. Okay. So if we take a look, we can actually find that nitrogen to hydrogen bond and say, okay, what is that polarity difference between the nitrogen and hydrogen bond? Okay. So to do that, we need to find what nitrogen's uh, electronegativity is. And if we grab the periodic table. We can look right here and we can find that. So taking a look at that and we find that nitrogen has electronegativity of 3.04 and hydrogen has electronegativity of 2.2 2.2 2. 
2.20. So when we subtract those two things, we get a difference of 0.84. Well, 0.84 falls under our category of being polar. So this is a polar bond. Okay. If we take a look at, let's say, hydrogen to chlorine, okay, in that type of bond, hydrogen again is a 2.2, and chlorine is uh, 3.16. Okay, so we subtract those and we get a difference. Again, we're going to use absolute values here, so it's never negative. Okay, we get a difference of point, was that point nine six? Yeah, point nine six. So here we have a difference of point nine six. So this is also a polar bond. Okay, but we could actually say that this is more polar because this number is bigger here. Okay, so that's how we actually calculate the bond polarity. Now, knowing the polarity of the bond is then going to allow us to start looking at whether or not the entire molecule is polar or not. Okay, so that's our next step here is once we know the polarity of the bonds, you know, in this case we have a polar bond pointing this way, a polar bond pointing this way, polar bonds going here and here and up here, how does that make, make our molecule work? Does it make it as a nonpolar molecule, a polar molecule, or what goes on there? And that is for your next video segment. Thank you.